I'm David uh, Crane, and I am a professor at Syracuse University College of Law, and I'm the former founding chief prosecutor of the Special Court for Sierra Leone. The Special Court for Sierra Leone is the West African War Crimes Tribunal with the mandate to prosecute those who bear the greatest responsibility for war crimes and crimes against humanity. Well, I had the honor and privilege of being asked by the UN Security Council and Kofi Annan to go over and to set up the court, begin the investigations, uh, draft the indictments, and start trying those who bore the greatest responsibility for the atrocities that took place uh, in that West African Civil War that took place between 1990 and 2002. Oh, I was uh, the second American in history to be the chief prosecutor of an international tribunal. Robert H. Jackson, who I do not compare myself to, uh, was the first American to be a chief prosecutor at Nuremberg. Well, I spent 30 years in public service before I went to uh, West Africa, and I have been on the edges of some extreme situations uh, uh, based on my past uh, professions, but I have never seen horror like this. Uh, the smell of death, uh, the fog of war, uh, the vultures circling uh, the air constantly. When I stepped off that airplane, it was like walking into Dante's Inferno. Uh, there was no electricity, no running water. The country was 90% destroyed. Uh, very much like, actually, Robert Jackson faced when he arrived at Nuremberg. Uh, total destruction. And from there, we began the process of building a capacity and constructing the court so that we could at least in some ways seek justice for this destroyed country. It was a, it was a privilege and an honor to, uh, and a humbling experience uh, to represent the people of Sierra Leone before the tribunal so that we could achieve some type of justice for the horror that they went through. The Civil War in Sierra Leone was part of a, a major joint criminal enterprise that was begun by Muammar Gaddafi in the late 1980s, and his intent was is to plant surrogates throughout the countries within West Africa and to uh, control them through those surrogates. Uh, and he did so and began the Civil War in 1991. Those surrogates that he was uh, planting in West Africa was the current president of Burkina Faso, Blaise Campori. Uh, as well as Charles Taylor of Liberia. He was also working on Ivory Coast and Guinea. His intent was to influence the geopolitical outcome of West Africa as the f emperor of Africa, as he so declared. Uh, and this was uh, his beginning of, a, of an experiment which he was going to use against the rest of Africa. And uh, the result of this rather interesting concept of of taking over a part of the world for one's own personal criminal gain. A very unusual way to start a conflict uh, was the murder, rape, maiming, and mutilation of over 1.2 million human beings during the 1990s. Uh, you're going to have to believe the unbelievable because there's no words in any language, particularly English or French, that will describe really the horrors that the victims of those atrocities suffered uh, during those 10 years. One of the three heads of state that was involved in this horror that took place in West Africa, other than Muammar Gaddafi and Blaise Campori of Burkina Faso, was President Charles Taylor of Liberia, an individual who had been uh, running about that country for almost 10 years. And he was really the center point of this West African joint criminal enterprise of moving diamonds, guns, gold, and cash for their own personal uh, criminal gain. Uh, he was very much in... Uh, of interest to me uh, when I went there and uh, certainly I had the statute uh, which allowed me to possibly die to head of state. It's very important to understand that the cornerstone of international law is the state and the sovereignty of the state and within that the concept of head of state immunity uh, is rock solid and it's only been in the past 10 years uh, from the Charles Taylor case that we have seen that immunity uh, washed away dealing with international crimes. And so a head of state today uh, cannot hide behind the concept of head of state immunity based on the prosecutor versus Charles Taylor case, which now says that any head of state that commits international crimes while head of state 
will not be immune and can be held individually criminally liable for those atrocities that took place under his uh, tutelage. So Charles Taylor was very much uh, in my sights and uh, the process began shortly after I arrived. Seven months later he was indicted. We sealed that indictment and then when he was going to a conference in Ghana I unsealed the indictment for the express purpose of humbling him before the people of West Africa. I think it's important to understand that, uh, and I have always told the people of West Africa, that the rule of law is more powerful than the rule of the gun. And at the stroke of my pen, I brought down the most powerful warlord in Africa. And we wanted to show the people of West Africa that instead of reaching for an AK-47, they should reach for the rule of law. Well, the fondest hope I have for the future is that uh, mankind has decided not to let heads of state destroy their own citizens, and I think that that's certainly a step in the right direction. Uh, it's interesting to note that the bloody 20th century, as I call it, uh, when there was not a mechanism by which we held accountable heads of state, over 215 million human beings perished uh, at the hands of uh, governments. Of those, 115 million died at the hands of their own governments, and mankind has decided that this should never happen again. My concern about modern international criminal uh, justice is that it won't be justice for all, that it will be perceived as justice for uh, the weaker nations and not the powerful nations. Justice has to be seen for everyone. No one is above the law, and unfortunately I see a potential where we have a tiered system of international justice and we have to be very mindful to avoid something like that. It's ironic, isn't it? The United States of America has set up uh, the International Military Tribunal at Nuremberg, has been uh, very much involved in the setting up of the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, for Yugoslavia. Uh, they were instrumental in setting up the Special Court for Sierra Leone. Uh, they were actually instrumental in setting up the Rome paradigm. Uh, they were very much involved in the drafting of uh, the Rome Statute. Yet, uh, despite all of this and the decision uh, politically to remove themselves from the Rome paradigm, uh, the United States uh, has actually built the house by which modern international criminal law now will live, and yet, over time, we'll be looking in the very window that we built into this home that we built and we'll always be removed from it.